Hey everyone, my name is Peyton, and this is a series going over creating a haunted house inside of Unreal Engine 5. If you have not previously watched any of the other videos in this series, feel free to check them out below in the description. But in this video specifically, we're going to be diving in a little bit more into some of the vegetation as well as the lighting. So as you saw there, kind of just had a new like branch that I wanted to throw on uh, as a material to my bushes. At least just get a temp in there instead of having those block out shapes. And I think this kind of helps go with that, you know, abandoned feeling that we're going for with this environment. And I also want to throw those on to my trees. It's giving a little bit more detail, and uh, like I said, this is very much a, a temp situation. Um, we'll kind of dive into it a little bit more. I plan to refine these trees out uh, more in the actual, um, pretty much the setup inside of Speed Tree and all. Uh, as you see, it kind of have that bark that I was working on inside of uh, Substance Designer, and as I continue to refine that, I just want to basically just, you know, flush out a lot of the details that are already there and it's not going to be anything crazy but um, yeah it's this is pretty much the base for the trees and the bushes and uh, they'll slowly get improved over time and uh, yeah with those bushes now that I have something that's a bit more refined instead of just like the block out kind of gray shader or so uh, that I was using before with um, yeah just big cube shapes almost um, what I can do with this now, since it has more of that negative space, is we are allowed to pretty much start to use it kind of, you know, to understand um, how the, the look and all is feeling with it. Um, and I really do want to think about that, that distance, you know, because I think I can use both the trees as well as the bushes to fill in that background. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy, you know, because the fog is helping us out a ton with this environment. Um, so we can kind of just put silhouettes back there and it's really going to, yeah. Um, and they could be way simpler uh, and cheaper than the trees that we currently have. Thankfully, these trees aren't like super expensive or anything. But um, yeah, basically just wanted to throw those back there. And if you notice, I definitely um, I think one big thing and kind of uh, something to definitely keep in like track of uh, as you are placing your trees and bushes is make sure you are changing the height of them, um, you know, slightly adjusting even like the the width and uh, just the overall scale of it, because, you know, if you place them all out perfectly then it's going to feel like an orchard where you know they all grew at the same rate um, and they're the same age and so you don't really have that like uniqueness of like more organic like forest and so when you change up the height you change up the placement you know sometimes you have them clumping up sometimes they're like there's some sparse areas it feels a lot less like an orchard even if they kind of were placed you know um, by people you don't want to necessarily have that like stiffness of what you kind of see when you do get uh, like those rows of trees and all. So getting a lot of variation there really does help a lot. So um, and now that I have those in, what I do want to do is maybe tweak the grass a little bit. I think it was just slightly too greenish blue and I want to get a little bit more uh, more of a warmer color. So I'm just kind of bringing it down um, to a tone that just feels a little bit, I guess, uh, drier, more dreary, um, because I think, yeah, overall, just going for that very, uh, like, overcast and uh, almost, like, murky look for the entire environment. Um, so, and I think, yeah, maybe not a ton of light hits here and all. There's a lot of just overall uh, abandonment um, across the board and really want to push that mood into there. So, um, yeah, I think this kind of works pretty well. And as you see how I kind of set up those trees and everything, it was pretty simple and they're cheap and really does help us save a lot. Um, so I think like, yeah, we're not having anything crazy. And now um, another thing we can do is put in some carts. While we're on the topic of savings, I have actually partnered with Mint Mobile to bring savings to every one of you watching this video. Have you ever thought, why in the world is my wireless bill so high? What is your money paying for? Speed, coverage, data, access to 5G, unlimited talk and text, or even mobile hotspots? Well, Mint Mobile offers all of these features for as low as $15 per month. 
They are built on the nation's largest 5G network and keep costs low because they sell direct to you online and cut out the retail stores and salespeople. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? Go to trimentmobile.com forward slash Peyton Marnay, which is also linked in my description below to get premium wireless for $15 a month. I've been trying it out for a couple months, and while carrying out my busy day-to-day -day tasks, I honestly couldn't tell a difference in speed or performance while connected to Mint Mobile's network. I was even recently at a large sporting event, and my phone that's using the Mint Mobile network was the only one that had signal and a really strong speed at that. I've honestly been impressed with Mint Mobile's network so far, and think you would really enjoy it as well. You may think that it is difficult to switch your service, but Mint Mobile makes switching easy. Thanks to digital eSIM cards, which most phones now have, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. If your phone doesn't have an eSIM, Mint will ship you a new SIM card for free. I set up my phone using an eSIM and it honestly was extremely easy and took less than 5 minutes. So if you are ready to save some money and be able to use that extra cash towards game development tools, education, or your software subscriptions, go to my link, trimintmobile.com forward slash Peyton Barnet, which is also, again, linked down below in my description to check it out. Now back to the environment. Uh, you might have noticed that I've been placing around uh, cards. Basically, these are some fog cards and all um, that I'm placing throughout the scene. And they're really awesome and useful to have fog set up like this as well. Instead of just having the exponential height fog or even the atmospheric fog, having some fog that you can really hand place and control is really awesome. Um, you can, of course, make these yourselves. Uh, I am actually using Easy Fog, which is made by William Foucher. Uh, you can find it on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. But I think it's a really awesome tool that he set up and uh, basically just gives you, um, yeah, all of the features that you kind of need for it. And so I uh, definitely recommend checking that out. But now what I'm doing after I've kind of placed around some fog, getting the idea and seeing that I'm looking for, I uh, felt like my clouds were a little bit too, um, like, the, they just weren't visible and I think this was kind of coming from the exponential height fog because my fall off wasn't high enough and so here I'm basically just kind of walking through um, doing some adjustments to where I, I bring it back down closer to the uh, actual horizon you can notice that there's a little bit more of the clouds and everything being visible now so we're getting more texture in the uh, sky which I think is nice you know it helps put in some detail there uh, it doesn't like necessarily like take too much really it's just you know getting rid of that uh, like constant softness that we are seeing with the, the clouds overall um, or from the exponential height fog uh, but as you see here I think one of those things that you definitely have to think about as you continue to move on is you know have I gotten stuck with a specific lighting scenario um, have I not uh, with this basically what I was kind of walking through is just testing out different things um, like sometimes it doesn't work sometimes it does but you'll find a lot of times um, and you'll notice here especially I'll try something out I'll, uh, maybe adjust the yeah directional light or add a point light or something in there um, and that's really just kind of the the process of yeah playing around with things seeing how they look um, and seeing if they work or not and I think what I've come back to is this kind of back lighting happening on the building I know we lose a little bit of detail on this house itself but we are getting more detail in the road um, and it just it kind of feels instead of like that um, just normal morning lighting that we're getting it's feeling more towards that like kind of eerie spookiness that I'm looking for and so I think I'm kind of leaning towards the backlighting uh, for the house itself you know we can still get a little bit of lighting on the roof up top um, and then yeah even like if we want something that's a little bit more like a, a focal point light um, so you know draw your eye over there to that like kind of darker area that's in shadow we could put a single light that's on you know maybe the porch lights on still for some reason uh, and that could even bring in some warmth there and it would be a really intense spot that like kind of leads you into the uh, the path and everything um, up to the front door of the house so these are definitely things that you know you can play around with and see what works what doesn't work um, and I think not getting attached to 
a specific scenario that you set up at the beginning is super crucial to making sure that you know you continue to tweak and improve upon your environment and you're going to get the best environment overall in the end um, but yeah with that i'm just doing a couple more tweaks here but that's about it for this video uh, definitely like this direction that i have going so far um, and in the next video we'll get into some more details so yeah hope you enjoyed and i will see you in the next one Bye.